Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be another replay from New York City Land, aka Starcon. I actually think, is this, I think it might be the third Starcon land? One was in New York in like, can't remember when, but then there was another one in LA, and this I think was by far the most successful one in New York. Zen, incredible putting it on. Bottom left hand corner, we got Sugo starting as the pink Protoss. Bottom right hand corner, we have Nesh starting as the midnight blue Terran. This is going to be on retro, part of the retro round in the lower bracket, and this is going to be an incredible match. Sugo, very, very strong Protoss player. Nesh, incredibly strong Terran player. Nesh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little bit interested to see how Nesh operates here, because again, he's about, he got in okay shape before this, but he was still about a year out of, I think, current meta stuff, and actually it's kind of scary to think about how much better Nesh might have done if he was a little bit more up to date on things, in particular with the uh, versus Zerg build orders. But I think I'm, I'm trying to think how much has changed in the versus Protoss era. There was there have been a there's been a move away from the two one aspect a little bit, a little bit more heavy vulture aggression. I think in the early game, and on the Protoss side, there's that extra shuttle drop action in the back pocket of a lot of Protoss players. I don't know if Sugo's going to opt for that or not. Both of these guys. And I'll link to the bracket after this. Both of these guys are incredible players. They're very, very strong macro-oriented guys. And so I'm expecting some probably more defensive play from both players to start, and then some epic clashes in the mid-game, potentially. Nesh sending out a scout on the 12 o'clock mark. Looks like we have a barracks being built with a refinery. So it looks like he is opting to play a little bit less economically aggressive. He's not just going for the barracks and to expand. Does want to get that initial factory constructed. Sugo skipping the first zealot instead going for a rapid, so not going for a rapid zealot I should say. Going to go ahead and get that assimilator up going immediately into cybernetic score. Now building that zealot at the 16 mark sending that probe out. Both players going to end up scouting each other a little bit later because we've got Sugo going for the clockwise scout Nesh going for the counterclockwise scout, and let's see if they both go for an adjustment when they run across each other's worker units here at the second position. Might be a little bit more beneficial to Sugo getting his way out there. First marine in construction. Let's see if there's additional marines or if we're just going to see a save until factory. It looks like Nesh is waiting on the minerals rather, going, rather than going for that second marine to get a little bit more of a rapid factory down. Okay, the workers have spotted each other. Nesh confirms nothing here, but there is an opportunity for Sugo to maybe go for a cross-map scout on the follow-up. It would have to be one of those really big brain plays, though. To And also, he doesn't know what the timing was, so it would be a very, very risky play overall. It looks like he's just going to continue with the path and send a zealot to scout instead. Two marines on the low ground. Third marine being constructed, and this first zealot can get a lot of damage done. There's only, Usually, you want three marines at this stage to engage this, the third one just popping out. There's already a decent, oh man, this one was rallied to the wrong position. Nesh adjusting, but did take a big shot. That factory is going to finish in not too long. So Sugo, rather than just expending his zealot and trying to get two kills in the SCV lines, well, actually I take it back. He's regrouping with that probe. He's got a Dragoon out already, and it looks like he wants to go for another attack. Marine on the low ground there from Nesh, checking things out, an SCV blockading and Nesh building a bunker on the low ground. Looks like he wants to go ahead and try to take that low ground at kind of an... He's got that odd bunker position. Probe gets wiped out. Zealot taking some damage. Marines... That was a nice little stutter exchange. Two Marines down. Is there even... The bunker might build, but I don't know if there's going to be any Marines left. One Marine manages to make it in at the last second. SCV dies along the edge. Vulture trying to push what it can back. Looks like the SCV has died in the main in the meantime to the Dragoon along that corner. Range being upgraded, but Sugo already in a very aggressive forward stance at this natural expansion. Already plopped down his natural, and he has two more Dragoons that are going to march out. Range is already finished, and this is a very awkward angle to try to repair this forward bunker. So Nesh being f honestly forced to build this command center on the high ground. Dropping a machine shop is going to go into... It looks like tank play, but this is going to set him back. I'm not going to say excessively, but he's going to have... He's a serious setback economically here to start. Sugo off to a very, very strong economic opener. In the meantime, getting a robotics facility to follow, dropping the second gateway behind this. 
but that Nexus already halfway finished, and that Nesh's natural expansion isn't even dropped. Trying to get shots off great protection from Sugo and retarget on that Vulture, so it's going to have to sneak back and get repaired. The Marine's trying to bully back the Dragoons. He needs to be a little bit careful because there were other Dragoons out there. And is Sugo going to go for an immediate third? He's already got, or is he just going to drop a pylon here for spotting just in case there's drop play to follow things up? He might feel like, okay, I don't see an actual expansion yet, so maybe there was a starport built. So just keeping that probe at the 6 o'clock location to potentially anticipate that. First siege tank out. It looks like mines were upgraded over siege. This should be sufficient, the five Marines in the siege tank, to push everything else back. There's still Dragoons here in the background. Yeah, it looks like he's anticipating a drop. And let's see, Sugo still hasn't confirmed that there's a command center floating out here. He might be thrown off. This is very old school play, building the command center safely up on the high ground and moving it from there. Natural expansion up for Sugo. Nesh has yet to land that command center. I think he's wanting to check how many Dragoons are out here first, seeing that there's not a massive Dragoon bus coming. Going to go ahead and land that command center, playing very, very self is safe. Vulture speed following this up, still sitting on one factory overall, and I take it back, he did in fact. So kudos to Sugo, recognizing that delay, maybe recognizing that there had to be some form of follow-up from this, taking that big an economic hit. So we do have a starport down and a dropship that's gonna delay plus one weapons quite a ways is kind of the cost and can oftentimes cut into that siege tank count as well. The observer also might catch it. That would be huge. Second refinery being dropped for Nesh to maybe try to quickly get additional gas to work on additional siege tanks. We'll see if he gets another factory up with the second machine shop. Sugo catching the edge of that dropship, trying to trail it. The vulture's out, but Sugo unfortunately already dropped that nexus at the nine o'clock. The vultures might be able to scoot to the nine o'clock position, disrupt that, maybe even take that down if they can get some mines down. It looks like Sugo, a little bit light on troops, went for a very rapid third base. So it's only, it looks like two, we got five Dragoons total to defend this. With some mines on the low ground, Nesh might be able to punch through that with Vultures alone. We'll see. Unfortunately, he didn't get a massive Vulture drop. It looks like he's going to skip trying to take that Nexus down altogether. The Dragoons out of position for Sugo now, trying to defend that 9 o'clock. So this is opening up an opportunity for the Vultures to sneak down to the natural expansion. Three Dragoons in countering there, but the rest, they're going to have to scramble to get up to the high ground, but all of a sudden, Vultures at the main, forcing the probes to pull off. Probes defending themselves in the main, getting, actually, I think a probe got the kill there. Nice cleanup from Sugo. That could have been a disaster. But instead, through some solid positioning, able to really mitigate the damage there, and now Nesh is in a lot of trouble. Three gateways up. Citadel of a Dune dropping rather than robotics for Reavers as far as the follow-up, so maybe a more rapid movement to Arbiter to follow things up. Plus one weapons on the way at the natural expansion, but this is going to be a very delayed plus one weapons in comparison. We do have the double machine shop to potentially fill in that siege tank count. I don't like this vulture being built right here. Might have been a gas issue. But Nesh needs to fill in that siege tank count rapidly because he's very likely going... Oh, he followed it up with a wraith. That's cute. Maybe to get some additional scouting. Looks like there is another probe out from Sugo. I, that would be very risky to go for yet another expansion. Probes filtering up to the 9 o'clock. Sugo's got a... Man, he's got a huge supply lead. He's got all sorts of Dragoons out. That plus one weapons is going to be severely delayed. Even on three bases, this is a very strong position considering how late that natural expansion was dropped. Another dropship out for Nesh. Wants to see... Conf and this might catch Sugo by surprise. Not much of a front door contain as well for Nesh, so Nesh actually needs to get out. He might lose the game right here, honestly, with a decent engagement from Sugo, because there's only two siege tanks and three mines defending at the front. A third siege tank making its way out right this second. Two, so it's going to move up to five factories, but this is only three factories that have been behind this and a lot, not a lot of siege tanks. Let's see if Sugo recognizes this. He can very easily reset the siege tank count with the troops he has. Dropship moving caddy corner with the siege tank in tow. This is very Nesh-esque in the mid game to have kind of light defenses on his front door, rely on his Protoss opponent to not get, uh, not get aggressive. Looks like a Vulture peeled out. Going for a surround, but I do believe Nesh might have found the exact corner to get that dropship out where it was outside of Sugo's range. He's actually doing a pretty good job of keeping the worker count high. Granted, that saturation is going to be lower, so he's just not mining as efficiently. Nine o'clock base moving up, a, a forge being dropped 
probe scrambling, rapid reaction there from Sugo, so he's only going to drop a single probe. That's not going to be sufficient to take this base out, but that is causing the rest of the Dragoons to exit out of the front, and that Nesh filling in the gap. Beautiful troop movement there, recognizing that those Dragoons are going to pull back, so let's see if he turns this into an additional expansion, able to get additional Dragoon on the low ground. Shuttle making its way out, going to be able to Zealot Bomb and clean up that Siege Tank. A couple mines going to get dragged, so pretty rapid mitigation does that dropship exit okay the dropship does pull out nesh moving yet another dropship out he's being relentless with the aggression here hasn't yet there's a, a looks like a pylon blockade at the six o'clock and the three o'clock but this is buying him time to make those upgrades although it looks like he's missing a, a timing there on the follow-up move to plus two and i don't know that there's a second armory out he's dedicated a lot of gas to dropships and might not just have the pure gas to filter in so it looks like able to get another drop in the main he's managed to keep that worker count somewhat low in the midst of all this and it looks like this drop not getting a lot immediately cleaned up from sugo it is keeping sugo off balance and nesh has managed to keep up pretty good macro behind this to at least keep the supply counts tight despite everything else that's been gone on in this match dropping at the natural still able to get a few probes right there zealot able to clean it up otherwise and that drop ship not going to be able to exit I think the additional, I'm wondering if the additional dropship was taken out. I don't see it anywhere on the map right this second. So we're at five factories, Academy just being added on. Nesh has taken out the pylon at the six o'clock and is gonna grab that for, him for his third base. Maybe gonna make his way towards that long macro oriented three, two play. Adding on a six factory right this second. And I kind of like the grab of the six rather than the nine o'clock away from Sugo because with the ramp and with a bit of clutter, a couple supply depots and things along those lines, it can be extremely challenging to break through the six o'clock base. Observer making its way that direction. Gonna see the SCV transfer. One detriment in Nesh's play here is he has not evicted Sugo's observers, which gives opportunities for Sugo to make decisions like this. Gonna try to zealot bomb his way in, gets a mind drag on top of the siege tanks. The siege tanks are cleaned up, so it's only vultures now as he's making up his way up the high ground. A zealot trying to, okay, get scooped up in the shuttle, might be able to do yet another mind drag, but the nice mind drag to follow, but still not enough. And Nesh able to reinforce up to the main, so the Dragoon's gonna have to peel back. Shuttle being uncontested, it looks like finally a missile turret being dropped to the top and maybe a supply depot here in the front. That should seal it. Suga going to try to grab a sneaky base at the 12 o'clock, keep it out of comps at range. Has dropped a cannon at the 9 o'clock. No cannon at the natural yet. Is sitting on, it looks like, six gateways. He's hid the Stargate out to the corner. And he's plopping down two additional gateways. Right now, I do not see an Arbiter Tri- Oh, never mind. The Arbiter Tribunal is, in fact, getting constructed. Nesh scooting out a handful of vultures, maybe to get some additional map control, potentially get some mines laid out on the map, might be able to find that 12 o'clock base as well. There's the dropship. There is a dropship top left, a single marine snuck out there as well. It was the fifth marine from the earlier <laughs> defense right at the beginning. Pylon gone at the three o'clock location. Vultures gonna continue their way up. I think they might find that 12 o'clock. Yeah, the shuttle's going to find that, or sorry, the dropship's gonna find that. But Sugo moving a lot of that army towards that natural expansion. It looks like he's not even going to try to defend this. Vulture's doing some damage, and I don't think he can get there in time. So pushing up towards the natural. Tanks are not siege right this second for Nash. So he's drawing the siege tanks back. Looks like there was a bit of a counterattack here at the 6 o'clock. The shuttle making its way all that all the way that direction. And Sugo, rather than push, pushing down to the natural that has zero defense, is continuing to try to drive in to the six o'clock, but from the opposite angle. Let's see if he readjusts. There, there's a single siege tank on the high ground that could easily get taken out. Nesh is peeled back and Sugo retreating. Oh, this is unfortunate for Sugo if he had recognized that there was only a single siege tank defending at the natural, might have been able to slam the way down, potentially take out that army, potentially take out that natural expansion, which would have been a huge win. Instead, loses his nexus at the 12 o'clock. Moving in some troops, looks like mine clearing, just making sure that three o'clock base hasn't been constructed. So three bases versus two. Dropship mostly providing some 
scouting. Nesh doing a great job of sending these vultures out to get some mines down all over the map and be a general hazard. Zealot almost getting the mine drag into the vultures there at the 12 o'clock. Few additional mines being planted to make it a little bit more challenging. Dragoons getting taken out as a result. And now Nesh, with that last mine drag, Nesh all of a sudden ahead in supply, showing strong macro movements. Sugo, yeah, usually if you're not able to cap that fourth base, you do want to have a higher Arbiter count at this stage because playing Gateway Man no longer becomes a viable option despite all of the early game de uh, delays. Now plus two weapons, plus one armor. Just a few moments from completing. I don't see a s Arbiter out in the field as of yet. And Stasis looks like it just completed upgrading. So there's maybe going to be a single Stasis to keep Nesh back. So if Nesh opts to get aggressive, it's going to be very challenging for Sugo to defend. And on top of that, Sugo, if he wants to stay relevant as the game continues, he needs to start taking additional bases. And right now, Nesh is staying on top of discovery saying okay i with the vultures saying okay i've discovered exactly where your bases are at I'm gonna shut down the probes so you can't continue with that action and that's gonna provide additional options for me to assail down the line nesh now with a very healthy siege tank count although you would have to pull out of the six o'clock location if he decided to get aggressive single arbiter out in the front not quite enough for an initial stasis Sugo checking out the 6 o'clock with a single troop. I think he's trying to get a gauge as to whether Nesh is going to start getting aggressive and if he is going to get aggressive, where he's going to head. Single Zealot marching to the 3 o'clock. Marine from top left migrating there finally. Paying for it with his life. Vultures looks like a move command rather than attack move. Taking a couple initial shots from that Zealot. And now Sugo streaming forward. I think he recognizes it's 3 base... If he can get that fourth base established, get some workers up there, that would be fantastic. Maybe even streaming forward so he can open up that opportunity to do the transfer around that 17 minute mark as that main is starting to mine out. Nesh, rather than going for the aggression here, looks like he is staging forward to potentially grab that three as his fourth base, sending out a few troops thus far. The Arbiter sitting back. Looks like Recall is being upgraded from Sugo, so rather than Zealot actually able to sneak through the lines, I think that was just supposed to be Scout to see what was going on there. So now Nesh needs to be very careful. Sugo seeing the lack of troops there, repositioning, wants to try to break here at the 6 o'clock. Single Siege Tank, the Zealot's able to scoot through. Mind Drag everywhere, and Nesh now out of position, potentially going to lose that 6, but closing in the gap that Sugo left open, moving to the natural expansion, lifting off that command center, and starting to stage forward with a lot of siege tanks. Sugo able to get underneath the siege range, though. A great stasis, catching a lot of the forward siege tanks. The second Arbiter moving up. It doesn't look like it has stasis energy itself quite yet, but this has been a beautiful engagement for Sugo, catching Nesh completely off guard in the middle of a siege. So beautiful counterattack. Not completely resetting the siege tank count, but very nearly doing so. Science vessels are out to provide some coverage for the cloaking. More siege tanks staging forward. Sugo actually should just pull back. He, that was a big win for him. But look at this. Nesh, despite being down, despite losing that 6 o'clock, despite no longer mining, uh, mining at, at his main, is actually up in supply with this secondary macro cycle where Sugo not macroing as well as he could have behind this. Instead, it looks like maybe spending minerals into cannons in that upper left-hand corner to make sure that was going to be defensible. Has established that top left. Nesh also taking this opportunity to grab top right, despite losing a large portion of his army midfield. Nesh re-dropping at that 6 o'clock. A single zealot. I love these scouts from Sugo of these sing single zealots. Single zealot able to crawl into that 3 o'clock. Discover that that's operational. If Nesh can secure everything, he will end up with an economic lead. But Sugo repositioning again to the six o'clock the siege tanks are still mid-map for nesh and i'm not sure he's gonna especially at that last exchange i'm not sure if he's gonna be too eager to push in with those siege tanks it looks like he is filtering the troops yeah rather than trying to take aim at the natural expansion ooh, just missed a probe transfer instead is maybe going to try to hit that nine o'clock the command center at the six o'clock location is wiped out the three o'clock is fortunately up for nesh but that's basically going to end up replacing his third base. He's going to have a fourth top right, but that's not yet saturated. A couple siege tanks vultures 
moving top left. Gonna, that's going to be a while before they're able to make their way through all of the uh, cannon lines. Zealots leading to clear the mines mid position. Finding siege tanks to the right. Vultures scooching in as well. And Nesh, yeah, leaving a mine trail, some siege tanks to the right to make reinforcements a little bit more difficult. In fact, dropping... Oh, man, and Sugo is just getting obliterated by this mine placement. He didn't have an observer with that attack force, and so just losing a lot of units for free and not, in fact, defending top left. So losing all... And that might have been the game-winning maneuver there for Nesh. As everything is getting shot, shut down top left, the probe's completely gone. Sugo down to 38 workers now. And Nesh able to recap and get saturation top right. Looks like he's going to end up losing a handful of the troops that were dedicated top left. He's not going to be able to take any of the Nexus out. So those bases are still going to be available, but Nesh, Nesh really, that mine placement really hurts Sugo. I'm guessing maybe an R, a control group and a half of units got obliterate, uh, obliterated right there, and now Nesh is up 40 workers. Plus he's got plus three weapons, plus two armor in place. Actually gets the Nexus top left. Moving out with another attack force while Sugo's still trying to clean up top left. Marines pressing forward, I guess, taking a note out of Sugo's uh, book. Let's go ahead and take tier one units. Although Nesh looks like he wants to encapsulate the army top left, potentially. Maybe because of the mining base, rather than closing down, he had an opportunity, honestly, to maybe get a stranglehold at the natural expansion. Instead, grouping up mid-map and dropping a handful of mines. The Arbiter count pretty high for Sugo. I'm not seeing enough energy. We are seeing... Okay, that's what I was looking for. Recall bottom right. Nesh anticipating it, though. He's got a lot of troops in position to help deal with it. However, he's having to attack his own way uphill, and some of his mines are working against him. Good mine drags from the Zealots into the siege tank. So this is turning into a big pain to try to clean up. So Sugo actually just holding the high ground is taking out a lot of Nesh troops, and with that, has closed the gap in supply to within seven, despite the upgrade differential. Usually you'll see, yeah, Protoss just focus on the factory lines, Nesh instead, or Asugo instead, recognizing the advantageous engagement position, just holding there and getting a lot of kills and some beautiful mind drags. Now starting to try to work on the infrastructure. Some vultures sneaking in. Nesh looking for a counterattack top left. Probes and Dragoons and Zealots engaging vultures. It looks like that is going to get cleaned up. A single siege tank alongside getting wiped out. The probes, though, somewhat exposed. The worker count somewhat is actually even both ends. Only a differential of two in Nesh's favor. It looks like the rest of the SCVs have managed to make their way top right. The Vulture is able to sneak through and confirm that there's no additional base top left. So he knows it's two bases versus two, and in that situation, typically Terran is ahead. Sugo also confirming that the six o'clock is not re-grabbed. Doing a little bit of scouting bottom right. The Arbiter has pocketed itself in between the main and the third, so there's a possible recall there, and it looks like we have another recall, maybe top right. Although Sugo may be concerned about his troop count to do so, he's opened up a 40 supply lead, so he's found top right, is not engaging that, that's completely undefended, and instead is making motions to the three clock where there are some vultures and siege tanks as well as turrets. That's unfortunate, if he had recalled top right, maybe he just didn't see the edge of it. If he recalled top right, I think he would have taken advantage a solid advantage in this match. Pushing in three o'clock, gets the recall off, only a single siege tank there, SCV scattering. Arbiter gets taken out. Mind drag does catch some SCVs on that lower edge. Turrets getting wiped out, SCV line obliterated. So now Nash down to one base in that upper right-hand corner. Trying to move some Goliaths in to clean everything else up, but a pretty solid attack from Sugo. He's still hurting for Minerals, he needs to reestablish top left. The Vulture is actually still waiting there to wipe out the mineral lines. Hasn't cleaned that up as of yet. And this is turning into a very scrappy late game, both directions. Sugo right now up in supply. Nesh has some sort of a bulkhead mid-map to engage a lot of the troops. It looks like Sugo doesn't need to engage this, but it looks like he's... He, honestly, I would just stay away from that. That's just to create some frustration as far as free movement between additional bases, and you have movement via recall, so just do it that way. Nash retransferring SCVs to the 3 o'clock location. He's actually got a lot of minerals in the bank. Top right is whirling. 
Three o'clock is looking somewhat, or sorry, nine o'clock is looking very, very thin for Sugo. Top left is up, but he still hasn't taken care of the vultures that are lurking. No pun intended, top left. Recall bottom right, right on top of the factory lines. Nesh does have an army nearby to maybe clean this up. Sieging short, defense matrix on the front to try to make this all the stronger. Looks like not much happening for Sugo there. Does he manage to salvage the Arbiter though? Single Zealot moving out to scout midfield. If he gets in top right, he's gonna have a feast of SCVs. Could create some interruption there certainly. So now the supply counts after that last recall even wasn't the... I'm still waiting for a recall top right. Sugo still hasn't discovered that potentially. Zealot getting wiped out. This is critical that top right has not been touched by Sugo. Looks like the vultures have been cleaned up in the upper left. I'm not sure how many kills they got in the interim. Still a slew of siege tanks mid-map. Sugo even in supply, which means Nesh is ahead because very powerful upgrades, level three armor on the way. Still looking, and I don't like this attack at all. He doesn't need to attack mid-map here, but it looks like he's pushing in to evict this army. Good stasis. But this is just expending troops. In fact, Sugo falling behind in supply here, despite some be a beautiful engagement and some nice stasis, it's just not an army he really needed to evict. Regardless, that's putting Sugo ahead in the overall supply count. Maybe he's just looking for a favorable trade, and this is a location where he got that favorable trade. But he needs to get some Dragoons out here in a hurry. Oof, lose, lost some more Dragoons to mines. He doesn't have enough army remaining to take care of everything once it comes out of stasis and it looks like Nesh is going to be able to just rescue it so overall yeah this turned into an unfavorable engagement he lost a lot of dragoons wasn't able to cap a lot of the siege tanks that he put in stasis and really wasn't able to gain an advantage and he's got pre precious few resources he needs to think about getting more efficiency overall Nesh at the end of that again ending up in the bonus Arbiter still sitting between that three o'clock base and the main and Nesh re-establishing. Yeah, there's just, I don't feel like there's a lot of reason. Ooh, do we have an EMP here? No EMP landing right there from Nesh. That would have been significant. Observer flooding its way top right. Finally finds it. 12 o'clock base is being built. Wonder if this is a surprise to Sugo. Few zealots marching their way that direction. The vultures could easily defend that attack. And Sugo in some trouble now. He does have the gateways pumping top left. Nesh is a little bit light on resources as well, but he is getting this 12 o'clock. And just covering a lot of territory. The Zealot's making the way that direction. Are the Vultures going to get there in time? It looks like the Vulture's hanging out at the 3 o'clock. Nesh moving up some siege tanks and Vultures of his own to top left. The Zealot's able to get into that top right SCV line. That's going to send them scattering as well as disrupt that 12 o'clock base. That might cause a command center cancellation. Let's see if Nesh can reinforce to the 12 o'clock. Instead, he's going to try to siege up this top left-hand base to take out what's left. The SVs drawing the Zealots into the Vulture line. So that's going to be a quick clear. And that top right is still going to stand. The probe scattering top left in the meantime. Sugo all of a sudden ahead in workers after that last engagement. But he shut down at the natural expansion at the top left. His 9 o'clock base is no longer mining. And this was a critical base for him to hold. Two Dragoons are going to be able to take out that 12 o'clock. It looks like Nesh isn't going to be able to get a cancellation. A re an offensive recall top left from Sugo. Pulling troops in. Mines dropping it. But that looks like that is going to save that critical base. Arbiter, let's see if we got another recall top right. That could be a game winner for Sugo. Depending on how many mines he hits in between. Nesh up 20 supply. But keep in mind, it just doesn't have the same mobility that Sugo has. Gas coming up. Seeing all those mines being dropped, but it's only vultures here. Sugo opting, despite having the energy, opting not to drop the recall there. Also, we got some energy, keep in mind, to maybe go for a recall here at the 3 o'clock, although there's a lot of turrets located there. A wraith making its way out, maybe to take out some of these arbiters midfield. The siege tank's still mid-map. I guess that could reinforce any location for Nesh and provide some support. So we got two bases top left. Nesh is still mining on two. He's got that natural option top right. The Wraith has found that Arbiter, is chasing it down, so that's going to have to retreat. 
back to the top left. Keep in mind this Arbiter still could be an X factor down the line, but part of the problem for Sugo is he's still down 20 supply. Wraith gets taken out when ventured out a little bit too far. Nesh gathering a sizable army, unfortunately at the exact wrong moment as the Arbiter making its way bottom right. Big recall on the factory line as some Goliaths are spawned. Does that send Nesh back? No, Nesh looks like he's going to go ahead and let some of these factories fall and instead is going to go for a counterattack and wipe out the mining bases of Sugo top left. Recognizing that, okay, you recalled your troops bottom right. Yes, I'm going to lose some factories. But I'm going to cut off what mining you have. And unless Sugo has a miracle re-recall bottom left, this is turning into a barn burner. So factory's getting wiped out. This is a big win for Sugo bottom right, but he just needs to defend what's left of his minerals top left. Factory's being redropped by Nesh in the top right hand corner. A great stasis catching a good amount of siege tanks. If we can have a reverse recall of the troops in bottom right, now that they've done sufficient damage, maybe Sugo can defend this top left and wipe the troops out. Looks like there was an EMP and that EMP hits all three Arbiters. So forget that. In the meantime, some Dragoons and Zealots marching their way top right. There's a slew of mines, but not a lot of troops elsewise. Command Center, sorry, some factories lifting off. They're burning. I'm not sure that's going to end up making it. Zealots marching across the mines, getting mind rags on the factories that are being built. So Sugo able to get troops. Counterattack from Nesh top left as units coming out of stasis to try to clear out what's there. And it's turning into a late game elimination match. SCV's pulling off the line to try to defend themselves. Actually, they're just in full retreat, abandoning top right. So three o'clock base is still mining for Nesh. It looks like he's gonna have to get it done with the troops he has on the ground otherwise. Sugo not able to, yeah, his gateways are unpowered so he can still produce troops at the main, but not any other location. Nesh has a lot of minerals otherwise, but he doesn't have any factories to produce troops out of. Sugo completely pile driving the main, wiping out everything there. So now it's who can do what with the latent army on the field. Nesh is fully upgraded. Sugo grabbing an additional nexus here at the six o'clock location, recognizing this could turn into a starvation match. And he just needs to make sure that he keeps some workers and all else out there. Another EMP as the Arbiter is exiting. The command, the, sorry, the nexus getting wiped out top left. The command center getting wiped out top right. Bottom right completely obliterated. Nesh deep in the red, so again, he it's just going to be the siege tanks and vultures that he's got. He's actually ahead in supply between everything else. SCV's fleeing to the 3 o'clock location, a single siege tank and some mines right there otherwise. Can Sugo defend? Can he get some additional economy up to make this work? It's going to be a close one. So 6 o'clock being built, probes distance mining right the second at that location. Nesh getting a move on. He's got to take stuff down and in a hurry. It looks like the siege tank at the three o'clock location, sending the Dragoons away, maybe recognizing that, okay, you can't really build factories up at that location. Sugo still has room to build additional troops, but this is a very heavy mech army gathering up at the three o'clock location. Four Dragoons, unfortunately unprotected by an observer, might end up hitting some mines or potentially siege tanks on the rear. Nesh grouping up. This is an inversion of the earlier situation, looking to maybe break the six o'clock, sieging on the low ground. Probes coming across. They're going to get wiped out. So let's see if Sugo's got something. A bunch of siege tanks now on the high ground, plus an EMP hitting some Dragoons. A few Dragoons coming in from the rear. A huge stasis along First of all, the ramp, so Nesh can't reinforce and catching a good bulk of the siege tanks. Along that left-hand side, High Templar moving in, Probe still trying to make their way in, Psystorm being dropped on a lot of what's left. That'd be great for Sugo, but still even in supply. Regathering his troops, holding the low ground. This is Psystorm bait if he can make it happen. Nesh dropping... Command center top left, a single Dragoon going to halt that from happening. So the command center up, probes can't get there. Distance mining now to the top right as the three o'clock location looks like it is just about out of resources. Nesh can rebuild up there if he can get dropped two command centers. Sugo has the infrastructure, but has no minerals. And he, he's being starved out of minerals here at the six o'clock. Command center fleeing top right. Nesh now pushing in with what he has left. 
to take out the Nexus here at the 6 o'clock location. Defense Matrix, huge defense matrix on the low ground, and Sugo trying to exit with what troops he has. And with that, it looks like Nesh, despite losing everything bottom right and everything top right, briefly, two Dragoons able to sneak in to prevent that from being resealed. Nice movement is pr potentially going to lose this match now as he's down 20 supply, has no minerals to build additional troops. A handful of probes desperately trying to mine top left. Mines taking out... Oh, he needs this Dragoon and Zealot. Instead, they're getting taken out by Mines. Nesh has a gigantic bank. He just needs to find a location to build some factories someplace. It looks like he's hiding some buildings, recognizing that this might just turn into a straight elimination match as well. And honestly, if Nesh just retreats to the top right, he's got enough where he can just rebuild. Vulture swinging in, attacking that 9 o'clock, catching some probes that were trying to distance mine there, and I think that's going to seal it. Empty size storm, and now the probes have nowhere to go. As Nesh has completely encapsulated these bases and sealed the game there. Command center is going to float top right. There is a single Dragoon there. I'm not sure if it's going to be aware. The Vultures should be able to push their way that direction and cut that off. Nesh, again, holding a sizable supply lead. Big army mid-map once again. Actually, might be able to distance mine mid-map and make that a factor. More Dragoons getting wiped out, and Sugo recognizing it. GG. Great play both directions. And an intense one all the way to the finish. Great game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.